Well, that's a strong statement. Let's see if we can prove it true. Hi, my name is Mark Million for CompuMove Systems, and today we're going to take a brief look at the life cycle of a job. We'll start by importing a website or moving.com lead, and we'll also import a military job from a DPS offer. Then we'll move on to scheduling and providing an on-site estimate with a mobile device. We'll process the job for booking and dispatch with operations overseer, and ultimately we'll do some revenue and expense allocations out of the job. When we're done, we'll take a look at some other job types, interstate and military, and we'll take a look at some warehouse management functions. First, though, we need to answer an important question. What is CompuMove version 8? CompuMove version 8 is a cloud application. That means it's a piece of application software that's delivered over the internet. That means you can log in from anywhere, any device, anytime with any of the browsers, Mozilla, Firefox, Chrome, Internet Explorer, Edge, they all work. Um, or you can install dedicated icons. There's a Windows icon available for download off our website. And there's icons on at the Apple Store and the Andrew, Android Store um, for the appropriate client there. The CompuMove servers that provide the internet application are hosted in the United States. They're actually hosted in Don't Mess With Texas in a data center. And the CompuMove program is created and supported by actual living human beings led by me in Carlsbad, California. We'll start by going to the work system and to the data import function and we're going to take a look at what happens when we bring in records from the outside world. In this case I've got two records from moving.com that came in as COD type leads and I've also got a military order here. If we click on the detail we can see the data points that we've extracted and we can also see the original body of that moving.com email and it's a similar situation with the DP3, the military DP3 offer. So I'm going to take this local move and this interstate move and set them both in to come in as quotes. And then I'm going to bring the military order in as a job because that's a case of an order where we've decided to accept it. And so it's going to go straight to job status. Now I hit create quotes and jobs and it generates the record. And now they've been brought in. Now that would be something that would happen behind the scenes typically in a server environment. But I thought it would be worth showing it there because I know there's interest in how those processes work. So now that we know we've got leads in the pipeline, we'll take a look at the CRM function and look at how that's managed. So if I'm a customer service person, I'm sitting in front of the CRM dashboard. As soon as a lead comes in, in real time, it'll appear here for me. Shows me the shipper name, origin, destination, basic information like that. I'll click on the record and open it. Gives me an opportunity to take a look at where this person's going. I can do a reverse zip lookup if I want to. There's their phone number. I'll give them a call. I'll confirm that they're interested in having, having an estimate. I'll go ahead and set an estimate. Now in this case, I'm just looking at one salesperson, but I could be looking at a range of salespeople. I'd see what they have scheduled. I can support multiple divisions. I can look more than one week in the future. I can look further in the future if I want, but I'll just take the simple case here and I'll save that. So now an estimate event has been scheduled. So we're going to get a text message notification going out to the shipper right now that the estimate's been scheduled. There'll be a reminder sent to her 24, 48 hours before estimate time just to make sure they're still on for us. Something else we can do is if they've got something of interest that they're concerned about, we can capture that information right now. So if she says she has a grand piano, something that's... Um, of interest to us, we can go ahead and capture that at this moment and then that will flow through to the salesperson so that they will see that record. The other thing that will happen is that the shipper record will go into the estimate pending status. So whoever is looking at the dashboard will now see that that record has been taken care of. And so here we have another one waiting uh, to be taken care of. But we're going to pursue the Amanda Hall shipment further and we're going to press on and walk through the process of giving her an estimate. Our next job is to take a mobile tablet device out to the shipper's residence and give them a personalized estimate. Now we want to be able to do this in an untethered mode. So while I was having my Cheerios this morning, I exchanged the estimates for the day out to my tablet and now I'm ready to do a walkthrough without requiring an internet connection. 
I've opened my device, I've turned it into tablet mode vertically, and now I'm looking at the article list. You can see I've got rooms listed down the left hand side, and then across the top I have my choice of all items, room items, or pack items. So the room items are the items that are typical for a given room. So here we sit in the living room, we'll say that there's a bookcase, there's a couple of armchairs, there's a small desk, I'm going to go down to the sofas and say that they've got a love seat, um, and then we'll give them a large coffee table, and then a uh, good size flat screen television. Now, if we've got an item that's not typical for the room, we can find it. So if I hit L on the tab strip down here, and then there's, say, a riding lawnmower in the living room, I'm sure we've seen stranger than that, then that's not a problem to pick that. I can also go to the pack items and say we've got book cartons. Now that's a carton with books in it, so I'm giving it six cubes, as well as 1.5 cubic foot uh, regular carton. I'm going to do a dish pack, a lamp carton. Um, I can have PBO boxes, which of course count toward the cube weight, but don't go on to the pack list. I've also got the choice of modes. So if I've got something that's not going, for instance, if I'm in room items and I've got a grandfather clock that's not going, I can go all modes and I can say not going and I can pick that grandfather clock and then it goes in red into the not going list. I've also got additional stop modes. So in this case, I've created an additional stop and it's called grandma's house. So I'm going to pick that and I'm going to say that there's a rocking chair that's going to grandma's house. So now if I go back to the all modes, you can see there are the articles for the room. The ones that are going are in green. The grandma house one is in blue. The grandfather clock that's not going is in red. I've got additional functions. There's a creating function. If I click in here and say I've got a glass top table, let's spell that right. And I've got dimensions for it. Then I can accept that. And then when I click on that article, you're going to see there it is over there. It's showing me what I've got. Um, I can also go into additional rooms and I can make that personalized. So in this case, I'm going to say that's Sally's room and I'm going to do the rename on that room. So now I've got a personalized room description. So now I'm going to say there's a bunk bed and there's a chest of drawers and there's a small desk and we'll go to the pack items and we'll do some packing in this room. I'll so it allows me to then build the master list of everything that's going. I can look at it from the perspective of what I'm packing. I can look at it from the perspective of what's going by room. And you can see down here, I'm generating a weight based on the factor that I've decided to use. Now there's a variety of options for what happens next, but in this case, I'm letting it calculate hourly charges for me. Certainly on a weight-based move, I'd want to do that because that would matter. But in this case, I've got a formula for the number of pounds per man per hour. Pretty standard industry formula, 333 pounds an hour. So that turns out to five and a quarter hours for a van and men. And so there's my charge. Now in this case, I've got a local item set up that uses a multi-crew structure. That's not really required. Um, but I can also pack by the hour if I wish. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's say five hours of packing. Um, but the other thing that happens is the cartons that I sold have flowed through to the pack screen. So I'm going to say I'm not going to unit pack this. I'm just going to do containers. So as you can see, we support both a unit pack and an hourly pack option. The other thing I might be interested in perhaps is valuation. So I'll go to the list and I'll say that I want to do $25,000 valuation with a $250 deductible. Obviously I can override the amount. The rate would be whatever is appropriate. So now I've got an assortment of charges in here. So now let's generate an estimate document. I'm going to go to the print menu. I'm going to do an hourly estimate. I'm going to display it on my screen. Now all our estimate documents and all our move documents in general are created as PDFs. So you can see here is the estimate that we've given. If we go to the second page, there's a valuation. You can see the valuation options where it shows the different pricing. If I go to the third page, there's the carton counts as I uh, entered them. You can see that that instruction regarding the grand piano has flowed through to the estimate. If I want to make additional notes, I can do so as well. And then finally, the last page is the itemized article list that I've created. So if I'm going to, if I want the shipper to sign this document, 
uh, right in front of me. I can hit the sign button and up comes a signing box and they can sign their name and they can sign for receipt of the estimate. You can see that down there. They can sign for the pack screen. They can sign for the valuation and they can sign for the inventory. And so now I've got a fully signed estimate and I can hit the email button and it will tee up uh, an email message that I'm going to send out to this shipper and I can say here's your estimate or words to that effect here's the estimate and then I can hit the send button and it'll go away so it gives me a completely seamless way I'm going to go ahead and save that in progress. It gives me a completely seamless way of managing the documents that I've created, managing the article list that I've done. I've got a variety of other things that I can print as well. There's short estimate form. There's a survey form. I can do a mover's rights document. Um, we've got all various specific state regulatory documents that are required. And then when I'm finished with this whole estimate and I've either printed it out on a portable Bluetooth printer or I've emailed it to the shipper, then when I save it, it'll exchange back to the office record. And then um, as soon as I do that, somebody will be able to open up the record in the office and look at it and see what I've done. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And I'm going to close that estimate document and then we'll take the next step. So now we can open up the quote record in the office and see the full detail of what's going on. We can open up that estimate document again. We can look at the charges that were estimated. But what we really want to do is save this quote as a book job. And so we can do that with a simple click. And now we've got a saved job record on our hand while preserving the original estimate detail. So we can press forward with um, dispatch and job document preparation. So there's a couple different ways to assign the schedule resources, but I've gone into the scheduling screen and I've gone to the day and I'm looking at the particular shipment in question. If I had a multitude of jobs on this day, they'd be list listed down the left hand side. I could filter according to the kind of job. I could filter according to how where they are in their life cycle. Um, in this case, I've just got one job record that I'm playing with. But if I go to my resource view, which shows my workers, and I click on this work event and I drag and I drop it. So I'm going to make Dave Smith my driver. And I can set a different start time if I'm interested in. Let's go ahead and make this a 9 o'clock start. And I just click on OK and it adds it to the work event. And then the, I can say Tom Jones is going to be his helper. And I'm going to agree to that. I can go to the equipment tab. I can drag and drop and say that they're going to use straight truck number 2. And so now I've satisfied the number of men that it was looking for, the number of vans that it was looking for, so the colors turn solid. I can change the schedule status into dispatched and say OK. And then when I toggle that status, once I'm done with my crew assignments, then it's going to fire off a text message to the workers who are assigned, let them know it's also going to send them calendar events. So whether they're iPhone people or Android people, they're going to get an email with an embedded calendar event. One click for them and it'll go on their Google Calendar, it'll go on their iPhone Calendar. Um, or you, Actually, we still support um, off, uh, Outlook as well, so all three of those functions are supported. Uh, and so now I've done the crew assignment. There's a variety of other functions here in terms of looking at who's available, looking at who's busy, looking at who's free. I can filter geographically. I can filter according to job type. I can filter according to customer sub-accounts. There's just a bunch of functions there, are far too many to go into for the purposes of this discussion, um, but it is worth knowing that they're there. So now if I were to open this job record and go to the form menu and say that I wanted to print a dispatch ticket, now I'll see the dispatch ticket printed, it shows six hours of van and two men, 3,472 pounds. It's an eight o'clock start. They're taking straight truck true. Dave and Tom are the crew members. I don't have uh, individual street address on there. The salesperson probably should have gotten that. Um, the other thing I might be interested in is making a driver note. So if I wanted to go into the memo area and say, now that was a sales memo that was there. I could actually have those print, although I don't have that turned on at the moment. But I could all, but I could just say something to the effect of, "Remember the, remember the piano, Dolly." 
and maybe take extra book cartons. There's a couple functions here that relate to this as well because um, there's a difference between a work event memo and a all event memo. So if I had a gate code or something like that, all of those could be prepared and then they would print on the resulting shipment paperwork. So now when I go to my document menu and I tell it that I want to print a dispatch ticket, it's going to tell me I've already got one. I know that. I'm going to make a fresh one. Now I've got, remember the piano dolly, take extra book cartons. I've also got the carton counts. So the carton counts that the salesperson originally collected when they did the inventory, of course the carrier pack cartons only, not the PBO cartons, they're listed. And then there's place uh, to keep track of the inventory. The other thing the dispatch ticket shows is the uh, summary for all the work events. So if I had a separate pack day, that would show. Um, if I had extra stops, that would show. If it was an account move to be billed to a specific uh, customer account or something like that, that would show. So I've got a dispatch ticket that's ready to go. The other things I can print is I can print a pre-move bill of lading. Now this is designed to be prepared before the shipment um, before the shipment happens, so it shows the charges, or excuse me, shows the rates. So if I've given somebody a special rate, if I've given them the senior rate, or I've given them there's a Saturday rate or something like that for the number of men that I've quoted, that's on there. If I go to the second page, I see my valuation options, and it shows pricing options for the various um, things that are available for valuation so the shipper can make a decision on move day if they wish to. I can go to the pack screen that's listed the rates for all the containers that I'm going to sell and allows me to fill in the quantity that's required there. And then finally a page of terms and conditions and then the inventory of the articles that are going to be moved. That all goes on the move day bill of lading. There's a few other options. So if I were to go and do a short bill of lading, that would look something like this. This would be more for something like furniture delivery or something like that. Also, if I go to the print menu, I've got a change order document. I've got, that's a two-page document. I've got a um, various options for packing and accessorials. Let's take a look at that one. A very simple, that's a sheet to keep track of additional services that would be provided um, and in addition to that, we have a multitude of documents for state-specific things. And many states have requirements, um, and we've done most of them. And we also have the ability to customize all of these documents as well. So that's worth knowing. So now the job has been prepped. We've generated shipment paperwork, um, and we're ready to send the crew out and take the next step. Now that the crew's gone out into the field with the shipment paperwork we've provided, it's time to take the next step and close out this job. It's worth noting that everything I'm going to show here can be done seamlessly in the field with an internet connected tablet in driver mode. I'm showing it here in desk mode, but the functions are exactly the same. So what we're interested in doing is entering shipment charges. If I go to the charge screen, I can see the areas where I'm going to enter the shipment charges. If I need to know what was originally estimated, of course, that's available here in the job documents, as well as going into the individual detail of the quote. In this case, I'm going to enter an hour of travel time. That's customary in some markets. And I'm going to use my hourly labor calculator to calculate the time that was spent. So I'll do a start time and a stop time and a, some break time and that will calculate shipment charges. I'll accept that. Now I've got a structure here that's crew one, true, crew two, crew three. There's a variety of different charge item structures depending on the nature of the job. Obviously a weight-based move or a military move or an office move or a multi-day move would have a different layout. Um, in this case where it's a multi-crew layout so that's what we're working with here. I'm going to come down to the pack screen and say there was five hours of packing labor and I'm going to go to the detail screen and look at the cartons. Now here in the first column it shows me what was quoted. I'm going to go ahead and enter what was the actuals were and it'll calculate charges accordingly. So now when I come back to the charge screen I've got the van and men charges, I've got the packing labor charge, I've got a container charge, it's added uh, sales tax because in the case of this uh, layout uh, that charge is calculated. 
So now we've got total shipment charges calculated. Now an important thing we can do at this point is seamlessly accept a credit card payment. So I'm going to click on the card sale button and I'm going to use the universal test visa number and I'm going to drop in the transaction amount and I'm going to say take card setup. I'm going to do postcard transaction. It goes to the card processing company, gets an approval. The card transaction has now been processed. I can email a receipt from here if I want to, but let's take a look at how that impacts the shipment documents. So I'm going to go to the print menu and I'm going to do a complete bill of lading and display it. And now I show shipment charges, charges and the payment. There's the transaction code and it shows the balance due zero. Now I can have the shipper sign this right on the screen, the same as I did with the estimate, and I can turn around and email it to them. I can also do an invoice. We'll actually explore that a little later for an account type move. But what I've done here is done the calculations, closed out the job, accepted card payment, applied it to the job, and I'm ready for the next step. Now let's take a look at a couple different job types and see what makes them unique with regards to things that we care about. Let's look at this Daniel Swenson record that came to us from moving.com. We're going to the origin destination screen. You can see that most of the information was complete, but we do need to do a reverse zip lookup so that when I return to my home screen, I've got miles. Now I could go to the article list and work up an estimated weight that way, but in this case, I just want to know how much is 8,500 pounds and let's go with a 55% discount. So it's calculating on a 400N derived or 400N style tariff. So if I go to the charges, you can see I've got 8,500 pounds, section three non-peak. There's the full tariff line haul. There's the discounted line haul. It picks up the insurance surcharge if it applies, and it picks up the fuel surcharge and the rest of the things that make the 400N what it is. We can say there's gonna be an extra stop. We can go do valuation options, replacement valuation, $250 deductible. Um, we can say we're gonna be packing by the 100 weight. Uh, or we can unit pack because if we go to the pack screen, we've got the unit pack charges that will carry forward from the article list should we, we, should we be doing a cube sheet. So this is doing 400 in tariff calculation. It's got um, all the extras, overtime shuttles, mini storage pickups, um, in and out of SIT, and also a place to just enter miscellaneous other charges. Now when we go to print the interstate estimate, we get the proper format for that kind of a job. Shows the discount percentages, shows groupings for them, also has the pack screen, also has the valuation screen, also has the packing screen, though we didn't do any itemized packing for that one, um, and then the page of possible extra services. There's a few other documents here also. There's a survey form that can be used to help with a walkthrough. There's an, a sales apportment form, so there's a worksheet for the salesperson to take out whatever information was, con was collected. So we, of course, could email these estimates out as well as print them on a portable Bluetooth printer. Now let's go back to the call center and let's take a look at that military order came in for Dave Anderson. Now this is a different situation. We're not estimating this. This is a military job. We've been awarded it and our job is to perform it. So we're going to go to the origin destination screen. You can see that the information came in with phone numbers. Now if we wish, we can click the map button and launch a copy of Google Maps based on that address. So as you'd expect, Google Maps displays. It also supports the multi-stop trip function. So if you've got a move that's got a pickup and an extra stop and an extra delivery and or you're doing trip planning, it'll integrate with that and you can pick a route and then Google Maps will show it to you. If we want to see where that address came from, we can go to the email tab and click into the individual email. In this case, it was a TMM offer and it shows the extracted data points. So we can take a look at where that information came from so that when we move on to do the rating, we can be confident that we're in the right place. Now at this point, I could enter a gross weight and a tear weight in order to get a net weight calculation. I'm just gonna go ahead and take the estimated weight just to make the shipment rate out. Because this is a military shipment, it automatically defaults to weight-based packing. We've got the various SSRLs we can enter. And of course, we've got the shipment documents that we need. We can do an 1850-1851. We can do a 619, 619-1. Again, these are all being generated as PDFs, and so they can be emailed and provided to business partners, trading partners, as well as the additional documents, the high-risk inventory, and all the documents that are necessary for successfully performing a military job. We also support the other kinds of military and government work, the Code 1 destination work, 
Code 2 Origin Destination, the International Code 4 and Code J work, as well as the GSA tariff. Now let's take a look at some of the aspects of managing storage. I got the storage tab up here for a regular civilian storage lot. You can see we've got three vaults of storage, $45 a month, a sofa storage. This is the template for the automatic recurring storage billing setup. So this template is used every month when storage charges are applied, depending of course on the shipment still being in active status and um, pending late fees and other things that might apply. Um, you can see in this example here that I've got a credit card number entered. CompuMove takes and holds and processes as a batch recurring credit card charges. Um, it's fully compliant with all the security requirements. Um, card numbers are hidden except at the time of entry. Um, there are user controls on who can do everything. Um, and it allows you to automatically batch process recurring storage charges. And the upshot of that is when it comes time to do batch storage invoicing, you can go to your job type, you can find your record, and you can generate a recurring monthly storage bill. For example, like this one that shows a balance forward, a payment made with a credit card reference number, new charges, a new balance due, um, return address information, all the usual. The other thing that can happen here is that this can be done via email. So there's a separate function to say who we're going to send email storage invoices to. And then those, since they are attached PDFs, just go out completely paperlessly um, to people who uh, requested email storage invoices. Now let's look at something else, and that's the warehouse locator system. If I go to the warehouse tab, and then I go to the warehouse manager for this shipment, now I'm looking at a bird's eye view layout of my, where of my warehouse. And I'm going to put this container in a couple vaults. I've got some empty vaults here. I'm going to put it in there. I'm going to put it in that vault, AA005. I'm also going to put it in a vault that's not actually already in a location in the warehouse. So then I can click through into that vault and put that vault in somewhere in the stack where I want it to be. How about right there? Um, in this case, you can see I also changed this shipment so that it's uh, using red type and it's just picking that up. Um, I could also go to the sofa rack, pick a location, select the job, assign it to a spot in the same way, put a, another item in another spot on the sofa rack. Obviously, we'll do a full warehouse layout for you. You can see aisles. You can see here we're stacked three high. Uh, quite a bit of capability there. So now once I've done my warehouse put away, back in the job record, you can see that this is located there. So I could go to the print menu and I could go to a warehouse worksheet and I could generate that document and I could send it off to my warehouseman and say, go get this shipment for us. CompuMove also, of course, supports military non-temp storage billing and the automatic import of your non-temp settlement statements. That's a massive time saver. Um, as well as SIT, as well as um, more of other kinds of storage. There's commercial storage. There's logistics work people do. Um, we should talk if you've got some heavy needs there so we can see what's possible. In the earlier example, we stopped at the point at which we'd perform the services. Let's take a look at what happens next. If I go to the charge area, you can see that from line hall, there's the possibility to take more than one posted revenue distribution. So for instance, I could say I hauled this shipment, and so I get a 60% hauling commission, and I was the OA, so I'm going to give myself a 15% OA commission. And so suppose we did packing. Now in military, there's subsidiary rates for packing and unpacking, so we've broken that out. So suppose I'm going to give myself 65% of packing. Now when I go to the print menu and I say that I'm going to print an invoice, now I'm invoicing somebody for just the portion of the shipment charges that I performed. If I'm doing a local move, I'm invoicing for the whole thing. If I'm doing this move, I'm invoicing for a share, and we actually show that right there. The other thing we can do is we can pay out a commission accordingly. If I go to the commission tab and I say add commission and I pick one of my drivers, now I'm doing an expense distribution. It's the money flowing from the opposite direction to a revenue distribution. So in this case, I'm paying out 
a portion of my share of revenue. So suppose I'm going to give 70% of that hauling commission to the driver and he doesn't get any of the OA commission, of course, but he might have done the packing. So let's give him, um, I guess he provided the boxes. We'll give him 85% of the packing. But you know, we can even get a little more complicated than that. I could say that he shared the packing with somebody else. So I do a 50% secondary share too. And then I can go back and I can pick another worker, Charlie Brown, and I can say that Charlie Brown got the other half of the 65% packing commission. So now I've got a John Adams commission for a share of line haul. I've got a Charlie Brown commission. He's only getting the packing commission. I've got my own revenue distribution. I've prepared and sent off an invoice. I'm good to go. So the next logical place to look at would be the MoveBooks General Ledger Accounting System, but that's just beyond the scope of today's video. So let me leave you with this thought. If you look at the reports menu, you start to get an idea of the value of integrating these functions from beginning to end. And that's really what CompuMove is all about. A breadth and a depth of functions from estimate to income statement. Thanks for watching.